from the Convergence Studio in the School of Communication, this is Loyola News Chicago. Hello and welcome to Loyola News Chicago. I'm Ashley Barnes. And I'm Sean Mayberry. Here's today's news. Several student organizations at Loyola are responding to the earthquake and tsunami and nuclear crisis in Japan by raising money and awareness on campus. The Anime Club is helping with the relief efforts by asking students, faculty, and staff to donate one dollar and to create a paper crane. They have tables set up this week in CFSU and the Terry Student Center. They're hoping to get at least a thousand cranes to send to Japan. Anime Club member Aaron White says the cranes carry an important symbolism. There's um, like a Japanese tradition where there's like a thousand paper cranes and it means something about good luck or good hope and I know when you make the crane you're supposed to like breathe life into it and it's supposed to be good luck. Crane folding is happening just until Thursday March 24th but for the next several weeks the committee called Loyola Response will have donation boxes at information desks around campus to offer additional help to Japan. Illinois State already has 130,000 requests for grants on file, and the deadline for student aid applications is quickly approaching. The, student, the Illinois Student Assistant Commission recently notified schools that the deadline for applications will be this Friday. This is the earliest cutoff date for state aid ever. State officials say they have to stop taking applications for the MAP grants of nearly $5,000 a year because of high demand. Illi any Illinois State resident is eligible. In order to qualify, students should fill out a free application for federal student aid online. After Friday, students should still apply because they could qualify for federal aid or other aid as well. Loyola students may complain about tuition, but it's going up at other schools too. The University of Illinois trustees are considering a tuition increase of 6.9% on their three campuses. Tuition would range from about $8,600 to more than $11,000 a year. But the University of Chicago is also announcing an increase in tuition this week. Tuition will go up 4.1%, making it just over $41,000 a year. That compares to about $32,000 a year for Loyola's tuition. While you were enjoying your spring break, Loyola's debate team was at the NCAA Tournament of, Tournament of Debate. For the first time, our team competed at the National Parliamentary Tournament of Excellence in Denver. A photographer accompanied our two ramblers, Elvis Vizi and Nick Locke, to the tournament. He was with them for both practices and debate rounds. They won six preliminary rounds with topic areas ranging from EU, Haiti, the Middle East, and intellectual property rights. Elvis and Nick ended up finishing 19th in the nation. Congratulations, you two. Loyola student government elections are around the corner. Christian Tomet sat down with Loyola student government president to talk about the issues facing USGA. Thank you. I'm here with Tony Catalano, president of the Unified Student Governments Association. Now, Tony, your year as president is coming to an end with elections around the corner. Could you just tell me a little bit about, you know, your experience as president, what's been accomplished? Well, there's been many things that USG has accomplished, and it has to do a lot with the, the leadership and within the Senate. Uh, and really, when you want to look at the different accomplishments that's happened, it's, you have to really look at uh, the different committees. Like, for example, the Res Life and Dining Committee, they had done a lot when it comes to expanding Rambler Bucks off campus. And that was something that we started last year. Now we're gonna actually going to be expanding it more into the fall. Another thing that that committee has done is the printer project. And now there are actually going to be printers in all residence life um, dorms. And by that, what that means is that pre people no longer have to bring their printers, you know, to campus. That will save, you know, energy and then, you know, paper and so forth, because we'll be supplying the resources. Uh, so those are some things like in one committee, you know, that's been doing. Another thing is looking at uh, the academic committee. I mean, they've been expanding and, and fighting a lot when it comes to the changes in core curriculum. Uh, currently, right now, there's been a lot of changes on how the core curriculum is going to be, you know, imposed on uh, students in the upcoming fall, in the upcoming fall semester. Uh, but a lot of us in USGA, we've been working you know, diligently to make sure that the changes reflect what students really want and need on campus. Uh, another example that, that I could think of uh, would be within the Safety and Wellness uh, Committee, and they did a lot when it comes to the uh, expanding of HIV testing. Uh, originally, the, un the university stopped funding for that, but we, and we saw that as something that you know, should not be. So the Safety and Wellness Committee went ahead, talked through the uh, Wellness Center, and we were able to expand the program 
uh, to get free testing for the remaining of this year. So those are like a few things that we've done uh, up to date though, and we're still continuing doing things that, are, that will expand into next year. A big thing, for example, is the um, proposal on shared governance. Currently right now there's a university policy committees, and what those do, they look at various issues on campus. For example, poster policy. When you go around campus, there's no centralized poster, posting policy for different buildings, maybe Mundelein or the library hours or so forth. So that all being said, like we're trying to centralize all those and work on the shared governance system. Now, moving on about the elections are coming up next week, can you just talk about the candidate forum that's going to be on next Monday, March 28th, and a little bit about the election process? Sure. So it's going to be a, it's a, it'll be it'll be in CFSU from like from seven to nine. We'll be offering free Chipotle and um, Jamba Juice. So please do come. But what it's going to be is we'll have the presidential and vice presidential tickets. Uh, there'll be a go ahead. We'll give opening statements. And from there will be uh, Q&A from me, the moderator. And then from that point, we'll open questions to the audience, though. So people can go ahead and submit questions to USGA at LUC.edu um, right now. And I can go ahead and we can go uh, add those questions to the, uh, the initial like, is like Q&A in the beginning. But from that point on, it will be a, a, the ability for our candidates to, you know, to get feedback from, from their constituents and, and see what students really want on campus. Then can you just tell me when the election will take place? What are the days? the election actually will be and how students can vote. Sure. So like after so after Monday's debate then um, at on Tuesday at 12:01 a.m. voting will begin and it'll go for 2 days until wins until next win, the next Wednesday, um, excuse me, until Wednesday uh, at 11:59 p.m. it'll end. So you, so students have 2 days to vote. It'll go into your LUC email account. It just takes 5 minutes. You just click the the tickets and who you want to win and also the the Senate positions as well and Chief Justice. That's great. My last question is, why should students vote in this election? The biggest reason why students really should vote is because whoever is going to be the next president and vice president, and along with the next Senate, they're going to be setting the agenda for what USG, what's the top priorities for USGA. And this is the opportunity for students to voice their, voice their concerns, voice their opinion to the administration. So when, if people do want to see these increases in like an eight ride services or, or a library hours or anything like that, it, this is where it really happens right now. And this will, like I said, will have full effect for next year. So it's really important. Great. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for taking oh, the time no and speak with us about USGA's activities and the upcoming elections. The election includes voting for president, vice president, and representatives for each class. Coming up, 80 Rambler athletes receive a special honor. And some Loyola men to step up on stage to shake it for a good cause. There are so many fun things we all can do to be healthier, no matter who you are or where you are. So let's move. Oh, well, here we go. Let's stretch in the grass. What a play. Let's play tag. Wow, unbelievable. Let's jump up and down. Oh, oh, what a way to finish it. And most of all, let's eat better so that we have the energy we need to play an hour a day every day. Everyone can play. Just go to letsmove.gov to learn more. Do you like this top? It's so gay. Really? Yeah, it's totally gay. You know, you really shouldn't say that. <laughs> say what? Well, say that something's gay when you mean it's bad. It's insulting. What if every time something was bad, everybody said, oh, that so girl wearing a skirt as a top? Oh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Those are cute jeans, though. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Loyola students drooling for the new Chick-fil-A may be gone for the summer vacation by the time it opens. Chick-fil-A was originally planning to open April 28th on the Water Tower campus, but a recent glimpse at the site at 30 East Chicago Avenue suggests the restaurant has a long way to go before opening. Crane Chicago Business reports that the site will now open in May. With almost 16,000 students, you never know who's at Loyola. One student has a famous dad, Chicago's Bears coach, Lovey Smith. 24-year-old Matthew Smith is a second-year Loyola Law student and is regularly seen studying at Corboy Law Center. A profile in the Tribune says Matthew even negotiated his father's latest contract extension with the Bears. I wish I could do that, you know, have a dad that I could help me to practice what I'm trying to do, you know, with the law. Yeah, I mean, that's really neat. That's, that's quite an honor to do that. And have you seen him around campus at all? No, I haven't. But, you know, I'm sure if he looks anything like his dad, I'll be able to recognize him. Well, hopefully I get to see him. <laughs> um, thanks, Ashley. 
Little Miss softball catcher Jenna Grimm hit one out of the park twice this weekend. But hitting two home runs against Eastern Michigan at the Hoosier Classic on Sunday didn't snatch a win. The women lost 8-4 after Eastern Michigan scored four runs in the seventh inning. The Ola women currently have eight wins and nine losses, and they are looking forward to a three-game series at Youngston State, starting with a doubleheader on Saturday. Spring is officially here, and that means it's time to pull out the golf clubs and hit the green. But Loyola's golf team is one stroke ahead of you. Senior Sean Copley was named Horizon League Men's Golfer of the Week, making him the first Rambler to earn the title for the 2010-2011 season. The men are back in full swing March 28th at the Butler Spring Invitational. Loyola student-athletes are being recognized for their accomplishments off the field this week. 80 Ramblers are being acknowledged for making honor roll during the fall semester. Candidates must meet three criteria to qualify, including participation in at least one seasonal sport, completion of three semesters as a full-time student, and maintaining a cumulative grade point average of at least a 3.2. Loyola is ranked third overall for Horizon League student athlete honorees, falling behind Butler and Milwaukee. Not, not as good as I thought a little bit of madness for NCAA basketball fans. I asked Loyola students how their brackets are surviving. Do you like... Not, not as good as I thought. I was expecting uh, upsets, but not surprises like uh, this year. It's going okay. Uh, I think it was in third place last time I checked. Uh, all the sports guys are in last place, which is ironic, I guess. I'm more of a music guy, so it's kind of cool. Um, but so far, I mean, Final Four-wise, I've got uh, I Wisconsin and... Uh, Ohio State, Duke, but Notre Dame is out, so I have three of my four left. Really bad. Really bad? Yes. Who did you have in your final four? UNC, Ohio State, Kansas, and Duke. I'm actually not into sports at all. I have no idea anything about the game, so that's why I didn't do it. With the Sweet 16 coming up this weekend, the brackets that survived up until now still have a chance. So how's your bracket doing? You know, it's doing well. I had the same bracket as President Obama, so I'm still surviving. But um, did you do a bracket? Yeah, I, I was out at game one. Really? As lucky as you. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Sean? Lucky you. No, I wasn't uh, participating <laughs> this year. <laughs> well, that's it for sports. Thanks, Brittany. Some of Loyola's finest men are not shy about dancing, singing, and revealing hidden talents, especially when it's for a good cause. Victoria Servanek shines a spotlight on UNICEF's charity event. The Mr. Rambler pageant demonstrated just how much Loyola's men know how to strut their stuff. The panel of judges, made up of faculty and advisors, rated the contestants on club and sportswear, beachwear, talent, formal wear, and question and answer. While he wasn't a judge, host Tom Wells had high expectations for the contestants. A lot of wild cards here at Loyola, so you never really know what you're going to get. Even though our male population is small, there's still a lot of great guys here. While one contestant's talent was to eat 10 bananas, another contestant bench pressed a friend twice his size, leaving only one thing left to do. Serenade Sister Jean, of course. But after all the contestants proved their worth, Rob Stanzik of the Catholic Student Organization was crowned Mr. Rambler 2011. This is first annual Mr. Rambler pageant exceeded expectations when students packed Mundelein Auditorium. Five dollar donations were accepted at the door. All the proceeds go to the U.S. Fund for UNICEF to bring safe water and basic sanitation to those all over the world lacking water. Victoria Serpnack, Loyola New Chicago. UNICEF raised $1,200 to help more than a thousand children have clean water for 40 days. That's a really good way to raise money for UNICEF. It is. I like that idea. Well, that's our news for today. Thanks for watching. Join us next week for more Loyola News Chicago.